So because there's so many variations, the way I'm gonna teach the mechanics on the bolo today is I'm gonna start first with understanding the broad general goal and the principles of what you're trying to do. And then I'm gonna to introduce to you uh, some of the most common mechanics that you're gonna to need to understand. And then I'm gonna go into practical application. The reason I'm focusing on the mechanics first rather than the exact system to do it is because it's much more analogous to boxing, right? In boxing, you have like a jab, a cross, a hook, an uppercut, and you wanna understand how to do those things in isolation and then you can start developing combinations. There's so many different variations of bolo, they lead into crab ride and so many things, there's no one way to do this. So we wanna get the core skill sets and mechanics in place so that we can build off of that later. If you guys like the content, the best way to support the channel is like and comment. Thanks a lot. So in this video, we're gonna be focused mainly on the actual De La Hiva Barambolo, where you invert through from here. This will lead into crab rides, leg drag, back takes, X hook, and all sorts of other sequences. But I think for someone trying to learn this position, this is the easiest start point because you can set it up from De La Hiva in so many situations. I'm gonna show a lot of setups at the end and you'll be able to get to the back. As you start getting into that, that's gonna start leading into other transitions into crab rides and all these other sequences. So broadly speaking, what a barambolo is, is we're gonna grab the hip, we're gonna invert through, however, and once I get through to this position, to get to his back, I have to get his hips in the air. It's very difficult to get the back with his hips on the floor. It's, it's extremely hard, right? There's gonna be many different mechanics to do this, and we're gonna go through those one at a time. I can stomp to lift him. Sometimes you can use this foot across to lift him. I can use a twister hook sometimes to lift his hip, but all of them require lifting the hip. A lot of times we'll even use our arms to help with this, right? So like my arm here is framing up to lift and all these mechanics and tools are gonna function together, but you need to understand that the main objective after we invert through is to find some way to lift the hips. Once we've lifted the hips in the air, often our arms are gonna now work in different methods to frame his hip in the air. So it may be an arm behind the hip, it may be like an uppercut position, it may be the left arm holding, but my arms will have to work to keep him elevated so that I can transition to doing some kind of finish to the back. So let's look at the first position, which is a stomp mechanic. So I go to your back. So we're gonna start off in this position just to learn this mechanic, because you're gonna use it so much later, where we're facing each other like this in a mirrored position. My inside leg is gonna go uh, on the inside of his thigh, so it's completely mirrored right now. So when I'm the one doing the bolo, I'm gonna take this top leg and I throw my leg on the inside. And my core goal here is to lift his hips off the floor so I can progress to taking the back. So what I wanna do is keep my right thigh really close to his thigh. I don't wanna be loose down here. I need to keep this tight. My left foot is now, I wanna stay center. It's gonna start pushing towards the floor. Once I push enough and I'm keeping tension with my right thigh pulling up, eventually my right toes can touch the floor here, like this. As I get this on the floor, I press it and now I continue to lift with my left hip and that's gonna lift his hips off the floor. It wedges his hips up off the floor. Once I'm here, I always look to frame his hip and keep his hips locked in the air with my arms because then my legs can work to take the back. It is really critical when you go with someone big or heavier that you do this mechanic. A lot of people will get here and then they try to rush to the back. Really big guys will start pushing on you with this hand and sliding away and you lose the position. So we really wanna get in and lift the hip. Now he can't slide away, see so slide back. Right? So once I get him up, I grab this hip and I'm gonna frame it with my left arm. You could do this arm too, but ideally I wanna switch it to the left arm in the end. Once I have his hip framed up, see, now even if I let go of my left legs, which I would keep, now see, try to bring your hip back down, his hip is stuck in the air. This will free my right hand to come up to the neck and control. Once I have this control, he can no longer move. Now I can release my bridge and I can even start shrimping out a little bit to try to put this twister hook in or just leave the regular hook, push, throw, sit him up and take the back. So the next mechanic we're gonna talk about is gonna be using our foot behind the knee to stomp. A lot of people use different names for these positions, so I don't wanna get caught up too much in how you uh, call it with what name, but rather just the mechanic itself. So I'm gonna put my foot behind the knee and my right thigh is gonna stay in tight just like we did before, right? It's just instead of being here, my foot is behind the knee. From here, I keep my right thigh tight. I start to push down until my right toes can touch the floor. And as I press through, that's gonna launch his hips in the air. 
Once the hips are launched, I can now grab the hip, frame his hip up, my right hand could go to the lapel. If there's a lot of space, I could even come through and grab here. Now his hips are locked in the air, I can shrimp out if I need to get the extra space to throw my hook over and sit him up. So the next technique we're gonna look at is a shin clamp in order to lift our opponent's hip. So I'm gonna set this one up starting from the actual inversion process because it's a little bit easier to demonstrate that way. So his arm's gonna be up just to demonstrate, you can keep it up. Right? And my right shin is gonna go across his torso and I want my shin to go over his thigh. What I want is my foot to pull into his rib cage like this. I shouldn't have this huge gap here. I should have my foot pulled into the rib cage. So from here, I'm gonna grab the hip. I'm not gonna focus so much on the inversion yet. We're gonna get into that later. I'm gonna grab the hip and go through. And as I go through here and invert, you can see my foot is pulling into the thigh. From here, I come around the other side. I wanna be up as close as I can on my shoulder to him. Here like this. The further away I am, it's gonna be a little bit harder to finish in the end. So I wanna be up here. Again, my foot's pulling in. And now as I step this left foot down, my right shin, come around here, is cutting into his thigh, right? So as I'm up here and my shin, my left foot clamps towards my butt into the floor, it drives his hip up. As I drive the hip up, it's gonna become easier for my hand or my arm to support holding his hips in the air. And there's different ways I can do that. Sometimes I do it with my palm if he's a little bit further away. Sometimes I use the fist like this. So I come up here, get close, I stomp. Now my fist goes up. And from here, once I have him loaded, go around the other side. Once I have him loaded up, my shin can now come through and switch back into that original stomping type position. Now I have him locked in the air with the arm, and now I can start grabbing the hip. I could switch into a twister hook to finish. I could just stomp him out, push the hip, grab, and come up to finish. One other major factor with the shin clamp is as we're inverting through, sometimes people will try to retake your back here like this, right? So anytime I'm in this position and I feel really in trouble with my back, my shin being here makes it impossible for him to retake my back. Right? So if you start grabbing my hip and going for my back here, this shin will always protect me. So if you don't know, quite know what's going on, always go back to the shin clamp and I can look for the position until I feel I'm really ready. Now I can switch through and go for the back. So the last mechanic we're gonna look at is what I call a failed bolo position and then we're gonna get into the actual setup. So come here. So in this case, instead of being in this position to finish, we're gonna rewind a little. I'm gonna have the hip. Imagine I had just inverted through holding the hip. I'm gonna have my shin underneath. So instead of being all the way through, I come in with my shin. So if you wanna practice, you can just start here with your shin like this and the left leg over. This is a nice control because now this leg is hard to move and my left arm is gonna be controlling the ankle. Again, we're reverse engineering learning this. So I'll get to these set setups to these positions in a little bit. Okay, so I'm here controlling this leg. He can't put it on the floor. He gets kind of stuck here. His hips are on the floor. Now what happens is I can kind of rock up on my shoulder and that lifts his hips a bit, right? So I have my hand on the hip here, initial hip grip right here. I'm kind of controlling here. I'm gonna rock up on my shoulder. From here, there's different ways to do it. I could keep this hand. I like to grab the back sometimes. And now my knee comes in and we do the same exact stomp that we did before. So one more time. Right, I'm here like this. We could do this with different grips. I could have a lapel grip here. Had I inverted holding the lapel with the bolo, I could rock up, right? I could shoot in here, stomp, take the back. A variation Espen does a lot is he'll rock up, put the foot in here and stomp to take the back. But just understanding that failed bolo position is really useful. Go down one more time is really useful because anytime we go through on the bolo and we don't get the immediate back take, we can go to this position and build. From here, I can also invert and go to crab ride sequences, start using this to take the back. We could be here like this, and then we can shoot this through and start coming up into leg drag sequences and start taking the back there. And all sorts of other systems are gonna build off that. I'll do future videos later going into more crab ride and different sequences but this video is made to function as like an under, kind of a basic understanding of Barambolo to get the uh, ball rolling so you can start attacking with this. And as you start getting into these attacks, you'll have good success with this. Then you'll start seeing branches off into crab ride and other sequences.
Okay, so now we're gonna go into our first setups. Uh, I'm gonna go very broadly into this because the reality is when you're learning the bolo, there's like hundreds of reactions your opponent can have. They can have the hands on the floor, one hand on the floor, push on your left leg, your right leg, flat back, sitting up, turning in, turning out. There's so many variations. So because of that, I, what I wanna do is more give you guys the broad principles you can apply so you can get the ball rolling. As you get the ball rolling and you start actually using this stuff and sparring a bit, uh, situations are gonna come up and you're gonna start de developing more specific solutions in the future. And I will do multiple videos on more specific situations, but this video is meant to function more as a broad understanding so you guys can get started in doing it. So one more time, uh, we're here. So we're gonna start here. The, we're gonna start with our opponent on his butt and then later on I'm gonna show the knockover from De La Hiva and other situations. So here we're gonna have his body turned away a little bit, right? So I, I wanna actually turn his knee in with my De La Hiva hook. This is something I learned from Nick Salles and Daniel Myra where they like to turn the knee in here and that's gonna expose the knee to get my shin over the thigh. So I'm here, I rotate inward and I like to grab the hip here. Go around the other side. So as I expose this, I can even use my right foot to kick his thigh. I'm gonna grab the hip. I'm not as concerned about the setup here. This is just a way to practice, okay? So, cause most of the time I set it up from De La Hiva when they're standing. So here I grab the hip. I'm gonna grab, I like to grab the pant leg. It's something Espen showed me I like, is I grab the pant leg here, I grab the hip. And now I'm gonna start to shoot really close and land my shoulder very close. From here, there's a lot of different responses the guy can have. If he's up like this, I always like to keep this shin clamp I talked about before with my foot grabbing his uh, ribs like this. I like to try to keep his foot off the floor if I can with my forearm. And now my right hand, I could stay on the hip, but in this case, since he's up, my right hand is gonna grab the material here, right? Now I'm gonna invert through, and I, again, I do that shin clamp stomp. People will have many different responses, stay up on your hands. Some people here, uh, they, if they stay up on the hands, I can grab this leg, and it's very easy to lift their hip over and go straight to the back. Go back where you were, right? Right? Uh, some people, when I get here, he'll go flat back like this, and when he goes flat back, as long as I'm close, I'm gonna shift my right knee in to the stomp position we did before, here. Now, as I start stomping, and notice I've already grabbed this leg so he can't kick on me, right? I grab this, look, now I start hitting that stomp, and what's gonna happen is this right arm that's grabbing the back, not only do I lift this hip, but it's already framing him up. So now if I let go of the legs, which I, of course I would keep, just to show you the power of this arm, so you start putting your hips back to the floor. See, my arm is supporting him up. Now I can hold him up and I press, scoot out, shrimp, and start taking the back, right? A lot of these mechanics you can put together in different ways. So I might be here like this, and sometimes it's hard to make the cross arm go around that side. Sometimes it's hard to make the cross arm here to grab the hip. So sometimes I grab with this hand first, right? Uh, Janata Alves does this a lot. So I'll be here, I turn the guy, I catch here, and now I'll go like this with this hand first. This left hand grabs. As I go, usually they start turning towards me, like this, right? And then I start going here. And now I have this hand on the hip, the right arm is still under the back, shoot through, pull up, and take the back. That's another really nice one as well. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about dealing with the far leg. So I grab the hip and I'm gonna invert through. As I go through, some people really early on start kicking on you with this. And if they do that, it can become really difficult to do the bolo because as I grab, they're kicking me off and they create space, right? So if I'm gonna do this method, often as I'm initiating the invert, I'm already looking for this because he can't kick me off now. I haven't inverted yet. So as I'm going through, I'm already grabbing the ankle or the pants. It'll depend on how tight their pants are. And I come through here. See here, I already got this. And now the more he presses down with that leg, it actually creates additional lift, right? So now I'm starting to create that lift there and get the flip. I scoot out here, pull him into the stomp, switch up to the hip and go for the finish. So another cool little trick here is at, once I grab the hip and I invert through, if I start to go through and he starts to kick on me here like this, I'll unwind and go back the other way, right? So as long as I keep this pant leg, even if he gets away a little, see, even if he gets away a little bit, back up, right? I can kind of pull myself back in by pressing on this pant leg, right? So now as he starts to kick on me with the foot, kick on me, see, I go back this way. Now here, this is where switching out into crab ride sequences can be really good because now I can press up, come into the pass, or do a re-roll to take the back.
All right, so now we're gonna talk about when our opponent turns into us a bit. So go around the other side. So what happens is I start to grab the hip here and now his upper torso is gonna be turned into me more. This can make it function a bit different. So if I go through here like this, when I can't get that in it, keep turning into me, right? And I can't get that initial lift because he's turned in a lot. A lot of times here, this is where I'll grab this leg and I shoot my shin through here. From here, it's a, again, it's a nice control position. There's tons of stuff we can do here, but for whatever reason, I just miss the initial bolo and I like to go to the failed bolo position. So now that the shin's here, often I'll rock up, which exposes that spot to shoot the knee in. So I'm gonna rock up on my shoulder. I like to switch, you go around that side over there. So often when I rock up here, it's gonna expose the back here. So I like to switch my hand to this grip if I can because it's gonna make it tighter in the end. Once I rock up here, I'm gonna shoot my thigh in and now I get my shoulder as close as possible and I stomp to the floor and now I'm back again in that stomping position. From here, I have the back. I probably switch the left hand to the hip, press up, scoot out and take the back. So the first setup we're gonna talk about is the classic from De La Hiva. So I'm gonna grab my opponent's ankle with my left hand. I like to grab the pant leg. You could do either one. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and get a collar grip. We're gonna assume he's down. There's a lot of different variations. I get the collar. The main thing with De La Hiva is I need space to set a good hook. If I'm too close, my leg is jammed up and I can't put a hook in. The further back I am, the stronger my De La Hiva hook's gonna be. Often, if my opponent's kind of close, it's hard to push on his hip. So I'll use this knee shield here to kind of lighten my hip. See how my hip comes off the floor? And now I can kind of push on the collar and create slide back. From here, I set my left foot really tight up in on the hip here, right? Come back down. I don't want to be on the thigh. I want to be up on the hip. From here, if I have enough space and his weight is a little bit more on this side, I'm going to use my right toes to kick his ribs. I could even use my shin here. So here or here, even if he was holding my pant leg, could even be in the bicep. And I just wanna pull the collar this way, I'm on my side, and I start to distribute him backwards. From here, he will land, and now we can start setting up all sorts of different, you go around that side, yeah. I can start setting up all sorts of different bolo options from here. Um, if he stays up, keep your hips in the air, right? Like this, often what I'll do, I got this from Espen Matisse, is I'll kick the chest or just drive into the bicep because now his weight is stuck on this hand. From here, I can grab the hip and now I'll pull, I'll shoot my shin across and now I'm already starting to come into bolo sequences. Again, I have to respond with what he gives. So he stayed up on his hands in this case. I might grab the back here, start lifting, bring them through and take the back, right? Go up again. So if I'm here, and I knock him over and he falls to his hip, often here, I don't like to let go to go to the hip immediately because if he's on his hip or especially his elbow, go back down to your elbow, right? Your elbow? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if he's on his elbow like this, when I let go to go to the hip, he might start pushing my hand off with both hands, right? But when he's up on his hip, uh, up in the air, he doesn't have anything to do that with. So if he drops all the way down, a lot of times here, go on your elbow, a lot of times here, I just keep the collar and go through. This is a variation Espen Matisse does a lot. Now I switch to here, preferably early if I can. I can rock up, go in here, and start taking the back. Another really useful mechanic once I create space is sometimes the guy's hard to take backwards to the left. That's usually because his weight is a little more to the right. Here, I like to lightly put my foot on his hip. I'm not pushing at all, I'm barely touching. And now I'm gonna pull my knees to my chest and center up a little bit, and it's easy to load him in. From here, I lift with my right foot, and I'm gonna take his balance over to the left this way. Right? I don't wanna take him out that way. It's okay if I do, but it's not as much for the bolo. Here, I lift. Now he falls out here, and now again I'm in these positions. Go to your back, right? So now I'm in here. Again, I don't know how he's gonna land. It's gonna depend on your opponent, right? But broadly speaking, if he lands here, I can always go to the failed bolo position. Uh, I could try to hit the stomp immediately, switch here and start building to the back and going from there. Again, I'm teaching this very generally right now because if I try to cover every possible combination, it's just gonna be an insanely long video. So what I want is for you guys to kind of get the broad ideas of like lifting the hip, how to off balance the guy and the different kind of finish variations you can do. And you're gonna need to put all the mechanics together as you start specific sparring in the positions. So sometimes we can't get the collar. Maybe the guy's trying to grab our leg. We'll get the sleeve, right? So I can do this with the collar or the sleeve. The mechanic is the exact same. I just want a bunch of space. I have the sleeve, now I put my toes in his ribs, I pull my elbow up, I get on my side and I pull him this way and that'll create that off balance backwards. Now here I can go to the hip, go back up, 
If his weight's a little more on this side, I put my foot on the hip, I pull my knees to the chest and I lift. There I would already start making that grip over and now I'm in here and can start building towards the back. So now I can't get the collar grip, I can't get the sleeve because he's standing so tall. See, and it here, yeah, he's breaking. So this is often where I go to the belt. I won't do the belt, come down a little bit. I won't do the belt here because as I grab, he might trap my leg or do something. But if I'm going for the sleeve and he hides the sleeve, he can't trap my leg. If I go for the collar and he stands so tall, see, I even scoot back and come up on my elbow here. Now he's breaking this, right? I just go to the belt. Again, often with the belt, I like to put my foot on the hip and pull forward first. So if I go here and I can get lift, I'll take him overhead, and now I'm starting to get in on bolo positions, right? Often what will happen when you do the belt is as you try to pull him forward, so stand up really tall again, right? As I try to pull him forward, he kind of steps his uh, left foot back a bit, and then it becomes easy to start pulling back that way. And again, now I'm starting to build. Again, you see how it's like I get this leg uh, clamp mechanic, and then there's just different finish variations. I could go to the back here, I could go to the hip. It's fine, you guys can kind of build around what you want. So one really cool thing once you're good at hitting it from the De La Hiva is it's so easy to transition to that from other guards. If I have double sleeve here and, and I'm like trying to get a foot on the hip and he pulls his elbow tight, go around that side. Uh, as I try to go here, I can set the hook and I'm just one grip change away from doing the bolo with the sleeve, for example, go up. If I'm playing collar sleeve, I could be here like this, attacking omoplatas and triangles, collar sleeve, I set the hook, I'm one grip change away, grabbing here, blocking and creating the off balance, coming through and building to the back. So really cool setup from top is anytime I'm in De La Hiva and I trap this leg here, if I get this collar for a knee cut, I'm only a quick turn away from a bolo. Because if you see here, this is the uh, shin clamp positioning. My leg isn't across his torso, but the mechanic will work just the same. So if I'm here like this and I get the collar, I'll trap this guy. I'm gonna shoot my right shoulder over here and see I'm already in the bolo position here. Now if I stomp, it's really easy to lift his hip up push over and start going towards the back. You can even do this one from a uh, single leg X as well. So if I'm here and he's on his back and he gets like shin to shin and clears me in right when he gets in the position, uh, I'll do it right when he goes in or if the foot's on the hip, I'll pop it off. I go here and again, I drop, land in the position and go to the back. So once you start understanding the mechanics of how to do this from the uh, initial guard position and you really specific spar and develop in it, you'll start seeing setups for this from everywhere. Another cool setup is from a stack. So anytime I have my opponent stacked up here, I drop my shin, I go across. I like to switch my cross hand to the hip and the back. My right leg, come around this way. My right leg, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop it in between his legs. And if you see when I drop here, now I'm in a stomp position, right? So what that would look like is I'm up here in the stack I get him up, I go here and here, shoot through, and drop. Now his hips are locked in the air, I can press him up, scoot out, and switch up to the back. All right guys, so I wanna talk about some easy ways to try to develop this skill set. So if you try to only do this from regular sparring, it's gonna be really hard because you have to be able to knock them over, and in the beginning you're gonna mess up a lot, so it's easier to do specific sparring and a lot of reverse engineering with this. So I like to tackle this position from multiple different start points because uh, to really put it all together, you're gonna to need to like see uh, like the stomp, see the clamp, see the inversion, and it's hard to do that if you only start from one point. So I like to rotate where I start from, so go down. So I'm just gonna give you guys some recommended spots to specific spar from. The first one, just be on your back, is actually just start from here with the stomp, have him lifted, and start from here with his hip uh, hoisted up in the air, and try to take the back from here. If you start specific sparring from here and you can get pretty decent at this, then if you get to this point in a match, it's gonna be a lot easier. And it's gonna train you what it feels like to keep the guy's hip locked up in the air, right? A lot of people, they get here and they chase the back too soon and they don't keep the guy's hip elevated and then he can wiggle away and get away. Okay, so that's one really good start point. Um, another really good start point is having the hip with the right hand, right? Having the shin under and starting in what I like to call the failed bolo position, right? So from here, it's very hard for him to get away, so you just start sliding away, back away, right? I'm, I'm very locked in and it's easy for me to start switching up 
and transitioning into posi other positions from there. Uh, if you know crab ride and stuff like that as well. So if you know the crab ride and the leg drag series and other positions as well, feel free to mix those in from that position. Cause realistically you want that whole like web of, of techniques to kind of form into one system. The difficulty is just like the start point can really be anywhere, right? So that failed bolo position is a good one. So go back down. Um, another good way to drill it is to uh, start from here and tell your partner he's going to let me invert. So you can kind of face me a little, right? So he's gonna let me invert, right? And then right after I complete the inversion, now he's allowed to start resisting, right? So he starts his resistance at the moment that I hit the initial inversion. That's a really good one as well, right? And that'll simulate more like you actually got the knockover, right? Um, another good one could be uh, starting with the shin clamp in here, right? And like you have the shin in here and then you start from here and immediately I'm trying to get the launch, lifting the hip up and starting to build through, right? And feel free to make up your own uh, start points as well. When I do specific sparring, I start from one position, but if I find a specific move or a specific response that's kind of frustrating me in the position, I'll go back with my partner and go, hey, can you start in that exact position and give me that response? And I try to troubleshoot things, right? This position is extremely deep. It's analogous to like there's guard passing, there's uh, playing guard, and then there's bolo crap ride, right? And that's like this whole other aspect of jujitsu and there's not one way to do it. It's like an entire, there's just like with passing, it's like there's double under passing, Toriando passing, same thing with Bolo crab ride. There's so many different variations. So go ahead and use those to start in and then even make up some of your own. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you guys like this content, be sure to check out my website as well, www.johnthomasbjj.com. I'll put the link in the description. I have a lot more free content on there, as well as I'm gonna be releasing a new instructional as well, overviewing how to develop an open guard, the fundamental mechanics of it, the fundamental mechanics of defense, offense, and how to put all the guards together in one system. And as always, if you guys like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.